Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to the 12th Annual International Feast of Tabernacle, Holy Convocation, being held at the fabulous Barclay Hotel, Atlanta's most convenient address, where Celebrity Cafe is featured and where the stars love to meet to eat. I've enjoyed the theme that stays on my mind and I hope yours. The theme of this tabernacle is keep the laws of yud heh and be blessed. That is absolutely reality. And pay Yahweh and yourself first is the foundation of all of your blessings. All of them. And you do not touch but you pay yourself for any reason. This is my commandment to you. Don't forget to get hold of the book or get the book, The Valley of the Dry Bones by Ben Ha'il. Not only will you enjoy it, not only is it informative, but it is right on point. And any of you who become scholars with the tools that I give you and the method of how to study through Brother Kezion, you too will be able to write your book on your name, which connects you to me, which connects you to my father, Yudhei Wafe, Yahweh. This has been a great feast, and I'm sure all of you had to rush down in order to get a seat. It is so beautiful to look out upon your faces and to see you uh, keeping the law of Yahweh, to keep the three high holy days, Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Passover, and Feast of Weeks. Since this is the Holy Convocation and the last night of this glorious feast, where you are honoring the law as opposed to my physical body, I would also like to remind you to remember Sister Judith, a sister who is going strictly through persecution. You know, I know, and any sensible thinking person knows that that sister has no reason to be in prison except that she is a true believer in Yahweh. She loves me, and uh, she is a dedicated worker to the advancement of the nation of Yudhe true holiness and righteousness. I'd also like to remind you to recruit, 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 recruit. Find your counterpart. Uh, increase the brotherhood. Increase Boston One. Also, on a daily basis, promote the widow's son raised. The Poverty to Riches TV show. We must always keep on our mind to love Yahweh with our all as we know in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And we must all have uh, mercy and compassion on the widow. I certainly do. And uh, as my sons and daughters, you too must keep that in your mind. Most important, overwhelmingly important. Have compassion on the the widow. We have a great reward from Yahweh when we do that. And now I would like to take you into our subject for tonight. And that is true believers are kept in active service. As yud heh wav -Heh, Yahweh, has sent me into the world with his universal message, even so do I also send you into the world with my universal message. I think we covered that quite well on last evening that my message is universal. And when you read Revelation, like chapter 7, uh, it, it 
very clearly pointed out that uh, after I secure the name of my father, Yudhe Wafe, in the foreheads of 144,000 of you, then all nations, kindreds, and tongues will be magnetized to me instantly. That's the very next move. Hundreds of millions. At least a hundred million. What a day to have all of that uh, power flowing to you, to have all of that wealth flowing to you, to the nation of Yudhe Wafe, Yahweh. So don't ever <coughs> forget <coughs> that my message is a universal message. And we cannot afford to forget that one moment. Not for one second can we afford to forget that reality. I know that many of you were spoiled over the years to think that, well, my message is only for the so-called Negro of North America. And I'm sure you enjoyed that thought. But to enjoy that thought is to deny the reality of history, namely our history. When you know our history, you understand that Israel, our brothers and sisters, are scattered among all the nations. They're scattered in all the countries, the four corners of the earth. So it couldn't possibly be only for the so-called Negro. Because that is to ignore all of our brothers and sisters in the islands and South America, India, England, over Europe, throughout the continent of Africa, the whole planet Earth. We are all over. So you must understand that. And my job is to gather all of you together from the four corners of the Earth. Thus, my message is universal. And I hope you understand that. And if you look up uh, all nations in the concordance, you will discover that uh, in all countries, uh, Israel is scattered among all of them. It's easy to find. And this will give you a universal mind. And understand that strangers and aliens are going to want to reside as a citizen in the nation of Yudhe a true holiness and righteousness. As we stand, as we rise, you can rest on that. It has happened throughout history, and it's about to happen again for the final time forever. In the meantime, you are to go not into the way of the Gentile. That does not mean you are anti-Gentile. But the ways of the Gentile we're to have nothing to do with. Because the ways of the Gentiles are uh, anti-Christ. Anti-righteousness. Anti-holiness. That's just the way it is. They're your teachers and they have not taught you classes in righteousness and ethics and morality and holiness. They do not teach that. They make fun of righteousness and morality. They said on television this week, to be normal is boring. While they were advertising some commercial and then said, uh, but that's sinful. And they said, but being sinful is so delightful. <laughs> that's the way of the Gentiles. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. At this point, it is all about the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And don't forget, my heritage is as a speckled bird, many colors. You, my people, are many colors, physically of the skin. So you're not going to be able to judge Israel exclusively by black. 
because you would suddenly have people with the blackest skin forming a little clique, and those with the light skin and very light skin would be outside of that clique because Yahweh and Yahweh said black. Well, there goes your myth, and there goes your misunderstanding out of the window. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You have to understand the whole world has been destroyed, deceived. That's why my message is universal, because those who are Israel are going to be magnetized to it. You cannot tell one from the other. At this very moment, the, some of the great contributions to our deliverance right now are, are by those whom you would call white. They love me, and they're giving of their skills and talents just to have a blessing from me. I have to accept them because their offerings are pure. And as you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel with my universal message, preach, the kingdom of Shalom is at hand. As you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel with my universal message, preach, saying, the kingdom of peace is at hand. As you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel with my universal message, let them know my message is universal for all nations of the earth. Preach, saying, the kingdom of perfection is at hand. Yes, as you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel with my universal message, preach, saying, the kingdom of yud heh wav -Hey, true holiness and righteousness, is at hand. The sooner you follow these little simple commands that I have given you this week, what I gave you at the beginning, uh, before I introduced my subject, the sooner you do this, the sooner we are delivered completely into power. Don't forget the Abraham Fund. Don't forget the Abraham Fund. I thank every one of you for your sacrifices, the sacrifices that you have made and are making. But don't forget, the enemy is real serious in trying to take me from you. Extremely serious. They're trying to absolutely kill my body with two charges for the electric chair, while admitting that in open court that I did not kill anyone. Yet I find myself there facing two cases for the electric chair. Why? Not because I've done anything, because they know that. They admit that. But because they fear your rise. My power to magnetize you, electrify you. So remember the Abraham Fund so that uh, I may have the attorney of choice. And this is the last big thrust. You know, the enemy works several different ways. Uh, one big way, one big way is to uh, try to break our nation, try to uh, put us in financial straits, try to <clears throat> cause us to fall apart from financial strain. So I ask the question, what price freedom, what price your life? I am your life. What would you pay? What would you pay? to save your life. I am your life. Don't forget that. Don't ever let that slip your mind. It's the most important thing that you can think of. The purpose of the enemy coming against our nation is to try and destroy it. But look at the crowd tonight. Look at it. Look around. The enemy has failed. Look at
look at where you are having your holy convocation tonight. Look how beautiful it is. Look how fabulous it is. The enemy has already failed. Not one of you can he pluck out of my hand. Every one of you that my Father has given to me, not one of you can be plucked out of my hand. I am giving you the knowledge of yud Yahweh. I am giving you God's knowledge. No people have been given God's knowledge ever before. Solomon was famous concerning the name, and others came asking him questions concerning the name, and he taught them, but he kept the knowledge to himself. Or we would have a planet full of the knowledge of Yahweh. I'm giving you God's knowledge direct. So fear not. I am exposing sin. I am exposing the reality that the world is breaking the laws of yud Yahweh. I'm making that plain. While others are talking about everything but the laws of Yahweh, I'm exposing that sin. How can people return to keeping the laws when you have this call will be terminated since I am exposing sin since I am giving you the knowledge of you they want since I am giving you God's knowledge then fear not what anyone knows therefore for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. There is nothing hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness that speak you in light and what you hear in the ear that preach ye upon the housetops that will magnetize the people of the earth to me. That's what I'm doing with the widow's son raised, which every one of you should place your order for that book right now. And I'm sure you will probably want to copy for one of your elevated friends. Go ye into all the world and preach the good news of the kingdom of Yudhe through holiness and righteousness to every creature. You hear? Did you hear that? We preached to the ghetto for seven straight years. Almost no return. Now you must preach the good news of the kingdom of Yudhe Wave through holiness and righteousness to every creature. That means the Godhead, those who are first class, those who are literate. And he that believeth and is baptized, or be baptized and becomes an is, shall be saved from death, shall be saved from destruction, and shall be saved from hell. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, on many occasions I have broken down, baptized, and let you know that B means to exist, which is from Hebrew letter Yud, the first word of my name. When you're baptized into the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of my message, my universal message, then you become alive and you begin to exist. And uh, you are free from the deception. You become apt. Apt 
absolutely apt. Nothing is more important than becoming apt in my teaching. That's why you have those study tools. It's so that you can become apt. Without those tools, you're not going to become apt. Most important. Most important. To be apt is to be gifted in the knowledge of Yahweh. Be gifted in the knowledge of my teaching. Demonstrate your intelligence and intellectual capacity uh, in regard to my teaching. Become sagacious and clever in promoting my teachings, in preaching my teachings. Become ingenious and adroit. You should show that you are brilliant and astute and very agile in presenting my message. The world should look upon you as being smart and acute. They should look upon you as being a first-rate intellectual, one who is most capable and competent and proficient in all that you do, that you are adept. And that everything you do is apropos. And then you become eyes. Baptized, eyes, eyes and ED, and that means to uh, become well grounded in the doctrine. Well grounded in the doctrine. Then you become a Baptist, and is is you be, you exist and you uh, are a clever, adroit teacher in the doctrines and the philosophy, a promoter of the philosophy as it is. And in those, under those conditions, you shall be saved from death, deception, destruction, and hell. But he that believeth not shall be damned. How can you believe and you have never studied be apt eyes in the knowledge of Yahweh? I'm giving you the most unique experience on the planet Earth because I give you power over all the devils. I give you authority over all devils. I give you power to cure diseases. Absolutely. Now, what do you think now when I said that? That you should go out and call 10 or 15 people in front of you and you start praying out loud like deceived people do and you're going to lay on your hands and, and start healing physical diseases? Is that what comes to your mind? Normally it would. But disease means dis, D-I-S, Dash E. Look it up. Study it. Our people, those that are lost, those that are walking in darkness, are suffering from all manner of diseases, including the physical. But when they start keeping the laws of Yahweh, then even the physical diseases begin to disappear. There's no doubt about that. I send you to preach the kingdom of Yute Wate, true holiness and righteousness, and to heal the sick. You cannot say, I can't heal the sick. I'm giving you the power. I give it to you now. I give you the power to heal the sick. I give you the authority to heal the sick. No excuse. How do you qualify yourself? A doctor goes to school and qualifies himself. You must take my yoke upon you, enter my school, qualify yourself, as a student, pull out all the tools and study as I have given instructions through Kezia. No excuses. Take
take nothing for your journey. Do not take stabs. Do not take scripts. Do not take bags or wallets. Do not take bread. Do not take money. Because these are things that what that's telling you is you will depend on materialism and be thinking of materialism instead of thinking on the job at hand. So neither take two coats a piece. That's a very, very deep spiritual understanding right here. And whatsoever house you enter into, there abide. Stay there. And thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. Now, uh, in your naivete, you might think that you should maybe quit your job, go running through the, the country without anything. That will only work if you're holy and righteous. It worked for our national ambassador, Uriah, because he kept the law. And he is blessed. Not one of you will deny it. Not one of you will deny that our national ambassador is extremely blessed. All of you are enjoying his devotion that results from keeping the law. You see, true believers are kept in active service. Active service. And I bless you when you do. I bless you when you keep the law. I'm ready to bless every one of you. Every single one of you. Many of you are being blessed. Some of you might say, well, I can't. I have children. I have something. I can't afford to leave town. Well, then, preach to the city. What excuse have you now? Preach in your city. Brethren, follow me. Follow me. But some of you want me to suffer you first to go and bury your dead relatives. that really means is you want to give those who are bound in sin that you know first shot at being saved. But I say unto you, let the dead bury their dead. But go and preach the kingdom of you, Tehwape, true holiness and righteousness. That means you're not to pick out someone to be saved. My message is universal. Naturally, your heart flows to your relatives. But it didn't always work out, did it? Others of you say, I will follow you, Yudhe Wape, Bethlehem Sophie, Yudhe Wape. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. But I must warn you, no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back like Lot's wife, is fit for the kingdom of Yudhe Wafe, true holiness and righteousness.